Marie Antoinette is remembered as the executed Queen of France, who lost her head on the guillotine during the French Revolution. She was a woman who was hated greatly by the people of France, but no one would have imagined that she would be executed. There were debates following the execution of her husband as to what to do with her, but hardline revolutionaries would then order her own death. But what is rather shocking is the fate of her children. Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI had four children, but three of these had incredibly awful lives, and their stories are tragic. Join us today to look at the horrific fate of Marie Antoinette's children, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. It would take Marie and Louis XVI eight years following their marriage for their first child to arrive. The Queen's main task, it was believed, was to produce an heir and a successor, and this wait caused worry in France that an heir would never come. Their first child was a daughter named Marie Ferris, who was born on the 20th of December 1778. She was referred to as Madame Royale, and she was married to her cousin Louis Antoine, the Duke of Angolmer. She would later become the Dauphine of France, and interestingly was queen for just around 20 minutes at some point. But Marie Ferris would be the only one of Marie Antoinette's children to survive the French Revolution. During this she was locked up in a tower above her brother Louis Charles, the Dauphin, and she would not be able to contact him. She was locked up in prison from August 1792 to December 1795, and she witnessed one by one her family members being taken away. Marie Ferris did not know what happened to her mother, aunt and brother, until she would later learn of this when she was released. She would hear the cries of her brother as he was being beaten in another room of the prison, and the only thing she had to do to occupy her time was to read the same two books over and over again. In December 1795, she was released from prison and was traded for some French prisoners with the Habsburg Emperor, Francis II, her uncle. But she was now alone and her siblings and all her parents had died or had been executed and all the people she knew as a child had been either killed during the Reign of Terror or were now living abroad in exile. Marie Faris had no parents also at this point as they had both obviously lost their heads on the guillotine and she would now spend the majority of her life living in exile in foreign lands. Following her release, she went to Vienna and other countries where her closest family lived. Her father's eldest brother would proclaim himself the King of France as King Louis XVIII, and he arranged the marriage of Marie Ferris in the hope that they would then have children and would then go on to rule. But the couple never had children. But the plan, in a sense, saw Marie Ferris being the Queen of France for 20 minutes, but her husband would then sign his abdication papers as king. Marie Ferris after this left France for Britain, before she returned to Austria and she lived in a castle. She died in 1851 and is buried in a crypt in a Slovenian monastery. But the boy who was considered the heir to the French throne was Louis Joseph, the Dauphin of France. But at the age of three, Louis Joseph suffered from a number of high fevers. His wet nurse was later accused of giving him tuberculosis, which was of course deadly, and the young boy had a number of health problems throughout his short life. In 1786 his fever would come back, and this was the first sign of tuberculosis, and the young prince was around five at the time. He had a lot of trouble walking and had curvature of his spine, which was treated by dressing the young boy in a metal corset. But by 1788 the fevers of the young boy got much worse, and on the 4th of June 1789, at the age of seven and a half, the heir to the French throne died. He was then buried at the Basilica of Saint-Denis, and his tomb during the Reign of Terror would then be attacked and desecrated by revolutionaries. But the death of the heir was shocking and heartbreaking for the people of France. Following the death of his brother, Louis Charles, the third child of Marie Antoinette, and Louis XVI, became the next heir in Dauphin. But his story was also shocking and horrible, and his treatment during the French Revolution was truly awful. He accompanied the royal family when they were moved from Versailles, and he was forced to live in another palace under 24-hour guard. But the royal family then tried to flee, and the king and queen tried to get out of Paris, but following this failing, they were then imprisoned inside of the temple, an ancient fortress in Paris, 
which was considered a horrific and brutal prison for the monarchy. But Louis Charles would live with his mother in the temple during their long and lengthy imprisonment. But the following the death of his father, things got much more tougher. When the monarchy was abolished in 1791, the new rulers did not know what to do with the son of the executed king. Louis Charles, as supporters of the monarchy claimed, was the new King Louis the Seventeenth. But on the 3rd of July 1793, at the age of eight, Louis Charles was ripped away from the arms of his mother, his sister and aunt, and he was then taken away and he would be held in separate rooms. He was locked in the same room as where his father had been kept before his execution, and he was kept in isolation for four years. The plan was to poison his mind with the ideas of the revolution, and to turn him against his mother, and he would during this time be beaten and tortured almost daily. He even gave evidence against his own mother, and he was completely neglected. Louis Charles grew sick and he was very dirty, and he could not wash himself or his clothes, and he was continually beaten and treated terribly by his captors. It's believed that he could not speak towards the end of his life, and could barely move, and was covered in his own waist and fleas. But on the 8th of June 1795, Louis Charles died, with death being most likely caused by the conditions of his imprisonment. Doctors noted and were shocked that during his autopsy, his body was covered in scars, linked to the constant mistreatment and torture that he suffered inside of the temple. There was one more child that the King and Queen of France had, and that was a daughter named Sophie Helene Beatrix. She was the youngest daughter of the royals, and it was hoped that one day she would marry a European monarch and would establish alliances for France. But her story is one of the most tragic of all. She was raised inside of the royal nursery, however at the age of 11 months she began to suffer from convulsions and these seizures lasted days and it's believed were linked yet again to tuberculosis. But after suffering for a number of days, the young daughter died and her loss greatly upset the king and queen. But the stories and fates of the children of Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI are shocking and tragic. The only one who managed to live out the French Revolution and the aftermath of their parents' executions was Marie Faris, who herself was imprisoned and was treated poorly, but she was then left without anyone as the landscape in France had changed drastically. Her brother Louis Charles was subjected to years of harrowing abuse at the hands of the revolutionaries, and his fate was also shocking. These children could have been the kings and queens of France, but their revolutionaries would have other ideas. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.